Today we're gonna to go over ceramic coating sales and how to improve your ceramic coating sales. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people mistake with ceramic coatings, first of all, is overselling ceramic coatings. And that's something that used to be done a lot by the manufacturers themselves. So who, who here has heard that stone, or, you know, uh, ceramic coatings stop stone chips? Right, they're scratch proof, right? Wrong. Uh, no coating has ever been scratch proof and no coating has ever been, has ever reduced stone chips. They may maybe help a little bit, but not that much for the company we're dealing with. And that is an error that I see a lot of people doing. When you're posting on social media, one of the things that I see a lot that really bothers me is I see the brand of coating you're using but I don't see your branding. And when you're posting on social media for your business, unless the coding company is paying you to have their branding in your advertisement, it should not be there. Your customers don't care what coding you're using. They have no idea and they really don't care. Despite what a lot of coding companies will tell you that, oh, if you use our coding, you'll get better leads, etc. You might get some leads from them, yes. But in reality, your customers are there for you. They're not there for the coding you're using. They're not there for the products you're using. They're not there to learn the process that you're doing. They just want a clean, shiny car that's protected when they leave. One uh, aspect of that is yes, ceramic coatings, ceramic coating companies should provide support for you. That support shouldn't be in the form of a t-shirt and a banner. That support should be in terms of customer service, should be in in terms of answering your questions, providing products that work for you instead of you working for the product. Uh, who here uses a ceramic coating that you can release into the rain in one hour? A few, okay. Basically, if you can't do that, find another company. The coating company, if they have to have the, if the vehicle has to be kept for 12, 24, 36, 72 hours, I've heard in some cases, they should be paying you rent. Unless you've got unlimited space, there's no way you should be keeping a car more than an hour. Your customers, and this is something a lot of detailers confused or have a, a misunderstanding about, your customer wants their car back the same day. They're not impressed that you have to keep the car overnight. And a lot of detailers think that, oh, my customer, I can charge them more if I keep it overnight. Actually, it's the other way around. You can charge them more if you release it the same day. In our shops, a coating job for us from wash to ready to drive out the door was a four hour job for an employee. So the coating was done the same day. But we tell the customer, we'll keep the car overnight. But if you want it back the same day, it's an extra $200. You'd be amazed how many people are willing to pay $200 to get their car back the same day. Even though they have a loaner car, they didn't have to pay rental, they didn't have to take an Uber or a taxi, we gave them keys to a brand new Mercedes and they wanted their car back the same day. So the misunderstanding in the industry that the longer I keep the car, the happier the customer is gonna be, wrong answer. They want their car back the same day. So find ways of getting it back to them the same day and they'll be happier customers. Who here has booked out less than a week? A few of you, good. That's actually a positive thing. Again, having, being booked out for a long period of time isn't improving your customer service. It's like going to a restaurant, sitting down, looking at the menu, ordering the meal, and then the waiter telling you, perfect, come back in three weeks. That's what we're doing when you have that. So especially for ceramic coating jobs, they're generally our highest grossing or highest profitable job. Always leave room in your schedule to take a job on. For us, customer would come to our shop. The first thing we do is hand them keys to a loaner car. Now they don't have the objection to that sale. They don't have to worry about getting a rental car, et cetera. And we would do it the same day. So we were not booked out more than four hours in our shop. If we were booked more than four hours, that meant we're hiring someone.
Now, if a customer wants to do it in a couple days, that's fine. That's up to them. But for us, we wanted, they're there, they're hungry. We want to give them the steak that they ordered right away. And the less objections to the sale you have, the more sales you're going to make. And that long lead time is an objection to a sale. The having to keep the car for X amount of days or hours is an objection to the sale. Who here sells a coating that's over $5,000? No one? $4,000? $3,000. Okay, we have a couple $3,000. Good. You should, on your menu, have an over-the-top, more expensive than you'd ever think ceramic coating. That's your best offering. And by having that ceramic coating on your menu, it makes your other ones a lot more appetizing. So when you go to the, you go to the steak uh, restaurant, they have that tomahawk. Not many people order the $150 tomahawk, but it makes the $75 ribeye look so much better. And that's what you, sh you should have something on your menu that's an over the top. Now, if you have a $5,000 coating option, yes, it should include windows, it should include the interior, the door jams, the wheels, everything. But have that option there. And by having that option there, you're giving the customer something to aspire to. When you walk into the showroom, your local uh, Chevy dealership, do they have the base model Colorado with the wind down windows in the showroom or do they have the fully loaded Silverado? They have the fully loaded, every option you could ever imagine Silverado in the showroom because they want you to aspire to that. They have the base model Colorado with the wind down windows in the showroom, some people might actually buy it, but they never show that one. They don't want anyone to buy it. And with your coatings, in your coating menu, who has their most expensive at the top of their menu? Very few of you. You should always have the most expensive at the top. Your best offering, that is the best thing you can give your customer, is that ceramic coating. Whatever ceramic coating it is, your best offering, that expensive one, is the one they need to have. That's the one you want them to have. That's the one that provides the best protection. Your lowest cost one is the one you want to sell to no one. Uh, there's a book that unfortunately I read maybe 40 years ago, so I forget the, the title of the book, but there is one passage that has always stuck with me. The consultant goes into a store that sells uh, billiard tables, or pool tables, I think you call them. So they sell pool tables. Walks into the store, at the front is a $500 table. At the back is a $5,000 table that's being used as a desk. The only thing the consultant told them to do is switch this floor around. Put the $5,000 table at the front, put the $500 table at the back. They used to sell a lot of $1,000 and $1,500 tables. After they did that, they were selling $2,500 and $4,000 tables because the person would walk in, see the $5,000 table, and it's like, ooh, that's the one I want. It's got all the, the bells and whistles. It's self-leveling and does all of this fun stuff. Then they'd see the $4,000 one and go, yeah, but it doesn't have that. Then they'd see the $2,500 one and go, yeah, my budget was 15, but I want the everything on the $5,000 one, but yeah, I'll, I'll stretch it to the $1,500. Now that $500 table was the one that was the desk at the back. They never sold the $500 table again. So that's a very important part when you're marketing your ceramic coatings is offer your customer the best thing you have and let them decide that they can't afford it. There's no reason why you should be deciding what they wanna pay. So offer them the best and if they cringe, then go down. If they don't cringe, then sign the contract. Uh, how many ceramic coating companies, who worked with more than one ceramic coating company? Good. Who only works with one ceramic coating company? Okay, you're limiting yourselves. Uh, and I own a ceramic coating company, but that being said, have multiple options. Now, if your ceramic coating company offers you the, the one year, the three year, the five year, the 10 year, the lifetime, then that's fine. But don't limit yourself necessarily to one company. And if your ceramic coating company is forcing you to
to only use their products, look elsewhere. That means they don't have confidence in their own products. You should want to use their ceramic coating. You should want to use that, the lower end coating and the higher end coating because they work for you. Uh, today's coating technology has changed and it's changing rapidly. There's a lot of advancements in coatings. Again, like I mentioned, if your coating company tells you you need to car keep the car for more than one hour, ask them how much rent they're willing to pay because there's no reason in today's day and age that a coating needs to stay for more than one hour. They can upgrade their formulas to make it a one hour release and even less than that. If it's not raining, go right away. But if it's raining or snowing, wait at least an hour. Uh, other aspects of that, if your coating is difficult to apply, I recently applied a coating uh, that was like spreading molasses on toast without a knife. It was just like difficult and rubbery and if you happened to overlap from one panel to another, you were screwed. You had to start over again. That doesn't need to exist in this day and age. So your coating company is a very important part of your success in the terms that they should be doing research and development to make your coatings easier to apply. And some coating companies have this misunderstanding of detailers. So they're taking you people uh, for granted, saying that if we make it hard to apply and we, we need to do this and this and this and this, the, they'll buy it. They'll buy into it because now it's more difficult. A professional coating to me should be the easiest coating you can ever apply. The home hobbyists, if they want to spend 20 hours applying a coating and 18 steps and all that, great for them. For you, you're getting paid to do this. It should be easy and hopefully a lot of you have employees. It shouldn't be a 10 day training to teach your employee how to apply a coating. Applying a coating should be the easiest thing they do in their day. It should not be difficult. It should not be rocket science. And there are a lot of coatings on the market that are not rocket science, that are super easy to install. So if your coating isn't easy to install, you need to change that. And by the way, at any point, if you have questions, please raise your hand. I'm here to answer questions. That's the, the whole goal of this. It's an interactive sort of thing. Uh, with ceramic coatings, keep it simple. Your menu doesn't need to have the one year, the three year, the four year, the five year, the six year, the eight year. The, have two or three options. Too many options just confuses your customers. It's like, uh, have you ever been to a cheesecake factory? Right? Their menu is horrendous. It's long. Uh, it's, you never know what you're going to eat because you're just looking over and over and, oh, well, this, maybe. No. Whereas you go to In-N-Out Burger, you know exactly what you're going to have. Uh, oh, sorry, we're East Coast here. Uh, you go to Chick-fil-A, you know what you're going to have, right? Uh, the menu isn't that elaborate. So for your coding menu, to make it easier for your customers to, to decide, have the easiest menu you can have. For us, in our shops, our top coding, top level, top price coding was actually our best selling coding as well because we sold it with enthusiasm. It's what was on our cars. Who here does not have a ceramic coating on their own vehicle? A few of you, okay. How are you selling a ceramic coating without knowing what's on it? That's what I'm here for. Okay, excellent. So. <laughs> Ceramic coatings and your employees. Your employees should all have a ceramic coating on their vehicle, but with a little twist that makes it so much easier for them to sell ceramic coatings. When you get a new employee, you put a ceramic coating on half of their car, just half. And then you give them two choices. You're still with me after six months, we'll do the other half, or you sell 10 coating jobs, we'll do the other half. You'd be surprised how quickly they'll sell 10 coating jobs. Because once you've driven a car that has ceramic coating on one half and not on the other, you realize the importance of a ceramic coating. <laughs> right? Every car deserves a ceramic coating. The most expensive ticket we ever had on a car was a Chevy Spark. This was the customer's first new car in his life and also his last. He was retiring. He paid 25% of the value of the car in coatings. Because we did door jams, we did everything. Basically his 
his uh, thing to us is, if it can be coded, I want it coded. So wheels off coding, including the hubcaps on a Chevy Spark, the door jams, the interior, everything. But he was a super happy customer. He wanted to protect the car. I had uh, someone, one of my coaching customers, that had a customer come in and wanted a 96 Toyota Tercel coded. He called me and said, should I do it? Of course. To that customer, that's an important car. Then he found out it was that customer's grandmother's car that she'd had since new. He inherited the car and wanted to protect it. So it's not up to us to decide what car deserves what coating. Yes? Why is it that every coating manufacturer out there constantly advertises $400,000 cars get it coated? I, I, my customers can't relate to that. No. I'm in a rural area. I do trucks. I do F-250s. I do minivans. And I don't have a problem selling it, but there's some literature for everyday average cars. I mean, my customers can't relate to a, a Lamborghini. And not, certainly not where I'm at. No. Every it just seems like every coating company out there they always, they, they market. So then people think, well, I, I only have a, a Toyota Camry. My, my car doesn't deserve a, a coating. I mean, it's not a Lamborghini, Ferrari, Porsche. Whatever. Exactly. Why, I mean, why do they just, you know? I have no idea. Okay. And there's a lot more coated Camrys on the road than there are coated Ferraris. So, you know, I'd rather do an F-150 than a Ferrari. It's just easier, it's simpler. Uh, one, you know, to that point, in your marketing, don't just show exotic cars. Don't just show the, the expensive cars. Show that you did a coating on a Corolla. Show that you did a coating on a Honda Civic. Because the person that has the Honda Civic might go, oh, yeah, I should do that too. And again, start with your highest price coating all the time. Offer them the best that you have. It doesn't matter what car they're driving. It doesn't matter the value of the car. If the coating is more expensive than the car, so be it. It's theirs. Yes. So we actually we create our own ads. Yep. After we coat, we had one of our local competitors. That's what he does. Is he shows the Lambos, he shows the Rolls Royce, he shows that on his page. We had a customer that called us specifically and said, "I've seen so and so's page. I didn't feel that my car fit for them. I'm calling you because this is what you show." Exactly. Yeah. The, you know, the, the, the dream of the exotic car is great. If you do them, yeah, once in a while, market to that. But they're not the everyday car. And most people that buy the exotic car, it's a throwaway to them. It's just, you know, they paid cash for that Lamborghini. The person that bought the Camry, they're on a 96 month payment plan. They want to keep their car. They want to protect their car. The person with a Lamborghini tomorrow, eh, I want a Ferrari today. Sells a Lamborghini, buys a Ferrari. They don't care about their cars like the common average driver does. So that's who you should be marketing to. That's who you want to attain. That's who you want to do. And every car is worth a ceramic coating. We had one customer come into our shop. He had an old pickup truck. He smelled like crap. He was a plumber. He just fixed a, a bad thing. And the truck smelled like crap too. It was rusty. But one thing we asked every customer when they walked into our business, would you like a ceramic coating with that? He was there for a $20 hand wash. And we asked him, would you like a $2,000 ceramic coating with that? Of course he said no. But amazingly, some people actually said yes. So they were there for a $20 coating. We included the wash with the coating. So they were saving 20 bucks. <laughs> but, you know, it's a good incentive for them. That being said, that customer shows up the next day. Now he's not driving a, an old rusty pickup truck. He's driving a brand new M3. That ceramic coating you talked about yesterday, can you do it on this? Of course. Once he washed the M3, he was blown away. So he brought his wife SRT8. When he came to pick up the SRT8, he had his 45 foot motor home with a stacker trailer behind it with his toys in it. We coated everything he owned because we didn't, we didn't judge the customer by saying, oh, you drive a rusty pickup truck, you're never gonna buy a coating. Who does marine coatings? Okay, RVs, 
Good. Airplanes? Few? Good. Uh, industrial equipment? Tractors? Excellent. So the industrial or uh, agricultural market is a big untapped market for a lot of people. And those of you that are in the snow belt, it's a little cold these days, right? Farmers, they have amazing garages normally that house their collection of tractors that are just sitting there waiting for you to coat them. Every time I've coated a tractor, I've walked in, I haven't even had to wash the tractor. They do that for you. It's all ready to go. You just polish it, coat it, you're good to go. With agricultural coating, you need to be careful in terms of what coating you're using. Not every coating can stand up to the rigors of agriculture. For industrial machinery, it's a little easier. Agriculture, they're spraying all sorts of stuff in those fields that is not really good for paint. And there's a reason tractors don't have clear coat paint is because clear coat will fail on a tractor very quickly because of that, all that harsh environment. So the, coating, the paint they're using is very different than automotive paint. And the farmer doesn't really care that you attained paint perfection. They want it shiny. That's all they're looking for. Because they know that when they go to auction and there is a 9310 John Deere that's all faded and ugly and has a thousand hours, and there's a 9310 John Deere that's beautiful and shiny but has 5,000 hours, it's the beautiful shiny one that's gonna sell for a higher price than the other one. Because we're all attracted by shiny things. We all like nice things. And yes? Oh yeah, definitely. You can coat appliances, you can coat kitchens, you can coat toilets for that matter. Uh, coatings can go on just about anything. That's choosing the right coating for the job and choosing the right way of approaching the customer. You know, a lot of detailers dream of, I want to coat a Lamborghini. It's a $250,000 car. Tractors start at around 800,000 and go up. Uh, so it's a way of looking at it. And for agricultural, it's very easy. Find out what the piece of equipment is worth and base your price on 1% of it. 1% of an $800,000 tractor is $8,000. The farmer has no qualms whatsoever paying that. Just 1%. Yes? What type of coating do you use for the agriculture? Uh, there's a number of different coatings. So I'm, I'm not here to sell products. But uh, basically, look up agricultural coating. There are wipe-on coatings and there are spray-on coatings. Now, who here sprays on ceramic coatings? OK. Um, that's an extremely dangerous thing. So ceramic coatings are, uh, for the most part, like 90% of them fluorinated. And the fluorination goes straight to your liver. So if you're spraying on coatings, any ceramic coating, you need 100% full PPE. You are going into a hazmat situation. I see people spraying on coatings that, yeah, they're wearing a mask, they're wearing gloves, or short sleeve shirts. It gets into your skin as much as it gets into your lungs. It gets into your eyes. And it's very dangerous. So if you are spraying coatings, or if you intend on spraying coatings at some point, get full 100% PPE, which means a PAPR mask. Uh, it's a powered air mask. The full bunny suit, everything. And you know, have no one around when you're doing it. But yes, definitely spraying coatings. So in the agricultural world, there are spray-on coatings, there are wipe-on coatings, or industrial as well. Some of the spray-on coatings spray on as thick as a, as a clear coat. Those tend to fail in five or 10 years. Uh, you want, if you're spraying on a coating, especially for the agricultural world, you want one that has a bit of thickness to it, but not so thick that it creates its own layer, per se. So five, 10, 15 microns at most is what you're after. Uh, to Humberto's point, anyone coated appliances before? <coughs> no. So those are a great thing to, uh, to coat. That stainless steel fridge, like you can go into Home Depot now and pay $5,000 for a fridge. Might not be a bad thing to ceramic coat that. And it's going to make those kitty fingerprints not so apparent and easier to wipe off. 
uh, people are paying a lot more for stuff these days. You know, phones, tablets, computers. You can easily buy, go out and buy a $3,000 laptop. Uh, you might want to coat that too. Coatings have their place and automotive world is not the only thing. Motorcycles, same deal. Uh, motorcycles, you should charge more than a car to do. They're horrendously difficult uh, for myself anyways. No, just motorcycles, they're a lot of work. They're smaller, but they're a lot of work. You, you lose less product, but you use more time or the same amount of time. And you're probably gonna rip a piece of skin somewhere at some point. Any questions so far? Yes? To me, there's no benefit whatsoever. For your customer, there's absolutely no benefit. For the coating company, there's a really big benefit. So uh, now there are some coatings that require two layers, but the two layers are not the same thing. So the one layer goes on, the second one modifies the first one, that's okay. But if it's two layers of the same thing, no. You're just wasting your time. Uh, basically the way a coating works, if we were to look at paint, paint is actually like a sponge. It's not this perfectly flat surface. The coating is going in and filling and coating those pores of the sponge. Uh, it's not building on top of the paint. There's not many coatings that, a um, little bit of math, we'll back up here for a second, and this will, will help. There are some coating companies claiming that their coating builds 20 microns. Well, that's technically impossible. 20 microns, so I'm, I'm from Canada. We use the metric system. One micron is one milliliter spread over one square meter. Your average car has 15 square meters of paint. So if you're applying one micron over 15 square meters of paint, you're getting one micron or one milliliter for every uh, square meter, you're building one micron. Your average car, you're putting 15, 20 microns or uh, milliliters of paint on, or clear coat, yeah. Coating, that's the word. Okay, uh, in the end, you're not putting that on. And I've seen some companies saying with their 50 milliliter bottle, they're building 20 microns. They have no idea what math is <laughs> because it's physically impossible. And most coatings have at least a 25% solvent content. So 25% of that you're taking away with your towel. So you're not building, but a coating can be two or three microns thick without being zero on the surface because it's going into your paint. So that's what a coating is doing. And if you're, like I say, if your coating company is telling you that they're building 20 microns out of a 50 milliliter bottle, just ask them to learn the metric system they'll realize that their marketing claims are not all they're meant to be. Yes, sir. So what are your thoughts on uh, some companies that say you should put warranties on your applicant metal caps that don't want to over you? Warranties. Okay, very good question. Yeah, if, if they say they have a 10-year a warranty, but then you have to put a coating on every year, that means they have a one-year warranty. Uh, and coatings today have really changed. So 20 some years ago when I started doing ceramic coatings, they were difficult to apply. They were finicky and they didn't last. What makes a coating last is the opposite of what people sell you. A lot of coating companies, uh, and they used to do this, they give you like a little chunk, what looks like a little chunk of glass, and this is how hard our coating is. Well, that's also what made the coating fail. A coating should be flexible. Your paint is always moving. It's expanding, contracting. Those of you that live in Florida, you know that every afternoon it rains in the summer, right? So it's going from a very hot surface to all of a sudden cold and then hot again. That is very hard on a coating. And that fracturing, so basically you have the ceramic particles and between them you have this little mesh, right? That little mesh is what's breaking apart. The ceramic particles may still be on the surface but that little mesh is what's breaking apart. And the coating companies that have you put a layer on every year or a, a mandatory topper, they're just filling that mesh again. But what's happening for us is that fracturing. Now, if they want to, coating companies can have coatings that don't fracture anymore. It costs them a little more to make it, but it can be done. So in today's world, you can have lifetime coatings. Those do exist, but the lifetime coating should be with regular maintenance. 
What's regular maintenance? Wash it every week or two, decontaminate as necessary. It shouldn't include putting a topper on. And if it requires a topper, then it's only as good as that topper. Now, if you want to put toppers on, have at it, have fun. But it's not, it shouldn't be a mandatory item with your coating. Well, if that's the case, every, every coating could be a lifetime coating. You're just putting another layer on there. So a yeah. can coat is a lifetime coating. You just got to come back and pay a needle, reapply it. And you, you yeah, know, exactly. Years of, of heavy coating in theory yeah. is lifetime because you just keep on reapplying a brand new, fresh. Exactly. Water. I, I can make a lifetime coating fail in about five minutes and I can make a, a wax last a lifetime. It's very easy. How do you maintain it? Yes? How are people justifying such wide dollar spread on coatings? I understand you've got years, yep. coatings, and vehicle size, but you know, one, one company will sell a thousand dollar coating where the next company is two thousand and then five thousand. Right. Where are they coming up with these variances? Is it just They're coming up with the variances. So why the big disparity in pricing on coatings? And one of the main reasons for that is people are afraid to charge what they're worth, first of all. Look at it an easy way, $200 per year. So if you're doing a three-year coating, 600 bucks. If you're doing a 10-year coating, 2000 anywhere in between. That should be a very basic calculation. Now, you actually want to charge more than that. And we are worth more than that. We're providing actual value to the customer in a ceramic coating. We're making their vehicle easier to clean. We're making their vehicle look better longer. And if you've ever traded in a car, if it's dirty when you trade it in, the, you know, the, the manager that goes out to evaluate the car, it's not going to be happy. But if it's clean and shiny, they know that they're not going to have to pay their detail department two or $300 to fix it. So it's worth a little more. Yes? I think another reason there's a lot of disparity is people are including the paint for extra price in <coughs> that coating. Right. Price. So, and that could be such a wide range. We price ours just the wash, prep, and coating, and then we do paint correction separate. But a lot of people are like, oh, $5,000, and you're getting a three-stage paint correction along with the five years. So I think that's a lot of well, disparity too. There's a shop in our local area that they have, it's almost a spreadsheet. It costs mm -hmm. this much for a ceramic coating for this size vehicle, this size vehicle, this size vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then you have one year, you know, three year, five year, eight year. <coughs> then it says you add this to the price of the paint polishing that you want. Yeah. And you have to buy the paint polishing to get the coating. And so, so they have to go that. through a whole, I mean, they're sitting there trying to figure out how much it costs. Yeah. That's a preference. And how deep do you want me to go? How, you know, do you want it protected or do you want it perfect? Right. There's have, a difference. They have a $900 full blown coating, yeah. polish everything for one vehicle and then a $4,500 for another. And it's the same year, like a three year. Or yeah. No. So to your point, personally, I like to include a paint enhancement in the coating just for the customer's perspective. Again, you know, we'll go back to the cheese factory menu uh, or cheesecake factory menu. It's overly complicated. And your customer, you know, the same as buying a car. You go to the dealership and they're advertising the Corolla for $29.99 or $29,999. You go there, oh yeah, but if you want air conditioning, it's this much. Oh, and if, oh, you actually want wheels on it. Well, that's another thing. And that piecemealing is poor advertising in my, my way of looking at it. Yes? Question. This uh, question about a lot of things, a lot of businesses, they think that the, the ceramic is going to be applied to ceramic coating and should be a paint correction, should be part of it in order to apply ceramic coating. Now let me ask you this. To apply a ceramic coating, what is it really necessary on the surface? Is it just a wash of this up and then a wipe on it? Or does it really need to be paint correction? So, paint correction is not necessary for any coating. Coating companies will tell you to try to protect their reputation that you have to do a paint correction. If your customer is happy with their car the way it is, it's fine. And that's why we price yeah. it separately. It needs to be clean. So, the question, the, the answer would be like this uh, in order to apply a ceramic coating, in 
Yeah, the surface perfectly clean. It doesn't need to be clean based on the No. Right. And for us, we always included a paint enhancement for one simple thing. It is the best insurance that the surface is actually clean. But that paint enhancement would take my employee less than an hour to do. So it's not that big a deal. Paint enhancement and paint correction are two totally different worlds. We're just cleaning the paint using a polish and making it shine a little more. We're not eliminating every scratch on the surface. We're not making the paint perfect. And if your customer says, I want my paint to be perfect, your comeback to that should be, so like when you bought it new. And most of the time that answer will be, yeah, like when I bought it new. As detailers, we know that paint is not perfect. It's far from perfect. A new car is crap. Uh, but to the customer, to most people on the road, that is what they consider perfect paint, not what we consider perfect paint. And sell to what your customer wants, what your customer needs, not what you feel they need. Because paint correction, it's something we all love to do. Paint correction is fun to do. It's nice to see that change. But in reality, when you're doing paint correction, you're damaging the car. Every time you take polish to a vehicle, you're damaging the paint. You're removing a finite resource that can't be replaced, and the coating does not replace the paint. Yes? No, nothing, yeah, no. Yep. Yeah. Some of you have rental cars out there. If it's a Mazda, go measure the thickness of the paint. You can probably see through it. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. So I, I have customers that will come to my shop and um, will want to do like a new suppression polish on the door. And I think they, they go and they need to come back to me for what? Or can they do like a partial correct for that enhancement on the paint or that to make sure that it's still clean? Okay. So for ceramic coatings, every coating company will tell you that our coating can stand up to a pH of 13 and a, down to a pH of 2. Then they tell you, oh, but you need to use this special soap to wash it because if you don't, it's going to damage the ceramic coating. What is it? Is it resistant to chemicals or not? Right? They are resistant to chemicals. A good ceramic coating, you can wash it with APC all day long, every day, and it's not going to damage the coating. Yes. So what's the best way to advertise online? Are you using Facebook or Google? There's other seminars on advertising here. I suggest you take them. Uh, every, everyone's market is different. Uh, some markets react well to TikTok. Some react well to Google. Some react well to Facebook. You need to look at yours. But the best advertising thing you can do is look at your SEO. That is the, and there's a, a few companies here that do that. There's a few seminars, go take those. But to get back to the other gentleman's point, yes, you can take a coated car through a chemical touchless wash every day if the customer wants to. It won't affect the coating. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that when they're washing their car, and who here doesn't use towels but they blow dry a car? Okay. When you're blow drying the car, you're leaving a thin film of water on the surface because not all the water is getting blown off. Some of it is evaporating. If there's minerals in the water, you're leaving those minerals on the surface and you're masking the coating with those minerals over time. A good water spot remover, even though you don't have water spots, put on the car, it's going to revive the coating. And that's something that we had a, a recent case where a customer was complaining that this coating is dead. It's not working, blah, blah, blah bit of water spot remover and the coating was back. But he was told by another shop that he had to have the car repolished and recoated. But that shop did not know that a water spot remover would take that film off. So if you're drying with a blow dryer, you're leaving a film on every time. So that customer that's going through the touch-free car wash, they're leaving a film on it. So eventually it is going to seem like the coating is degraded. The coating is just covered. Those of us that live in 
winterized areas, the sides of the car by spring, there's no beading whatsoever left. They're fully hydrophilic. And when they're hydrophilic, the water just sits there. Did a water spot remover, they're back. Yes, sir. Uh, what would you say to uh, people that say, um, manufacturer of a production company says under no circumstances, you could not go to an automatic car wash, scratch and swirl. From my experience, the coatings are holding up perfectly fine yep. through the, the car wash. I'm not saying they're not scratched, but from a, a beading and sheeting standpoint, uh, we have a customer that's gone through 104 automatic car washes in two years. When I checked the coating, it's absolutely uh, flawless of beading and sheeting. It looks like crap. It's yeah. not, not, not flawless, <laughs> yeah. but I'm just saying, so with, from, what would you say to that with people? If you can't go to an automatic car wash, I call that bull crap. Now. Yeah, exactly. I don't recommend it because I don't want a car scratch, but you can go do them. It, the, the coating's not going to fall off. Right, it's the customer's vehicle. They can do what they want with it. And one of the reasons we have a ceramic coating on the vehicle is to make it easier to clean and to clean it less often. And if we say to a customer, and this is something that degrades or, you know, a lot of people stop selling coatings because they get caught up in this, is that, oh, well, once you get the coating, it has to be cared for a special way. You can only hand wash it. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that. Wrong. It's your customer's car. If they want to take it through the car wash every week, by all means. If they want to take it through five times a week, that's up to them. Just tell them up front that, yes, the scratch and swirl may actually damage your coating. It's not going to last as long. If you hand wash it, it's going to last much longer. But it's your choice. But the coating is still there. You really need a lot of abrasion to remove a coating. And a lot of dealerships, uh, they put a sealant on in the beginning. And that's another reason why you want a little bit of polishing, is just to break through that sealant to get to the coating. If you have a previously applied coating, you don't need to wet sand it to remove the coating. Just a light polish and the new coating will adhere to it. So it's not, not a thing that, you know, if the customer says, oh, well, my coating, I had a coating installed by someone else. I'm not liking it. I want something better. Cool. We can do that. Just a light enhancement polish and you're good to go. Yes? So is it a problem with clay bar the coating? Clay bar, yes. Synthetic decontamination towel, no. So clay bar is an abrasive. The synthetic towels, the better ones, have no abrasives in them whatsoever. And they don't scratch, they don't mar, they don't do anything if you use proper lubrication and do a good job. What, what about iron or is that nothing necessary? That's fine. Yeah. Saw a hand over here. Yes. So number five. Number yeah. Five right. It doesn't remove a coating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's P. Yeah. But it won't remove the coating. Basically, what it's doing is the same as Dawn dish soap. So people think Dawn dish soap removes waxes and coatings. It doesn't do it. It masks it. And that's what number five is doing. There's no way that you can put a chemical on that's pH neutral, let it sit for two minutes, wipe it off, and the coating is dead. It's formed a mask on top. And I've tested the product. You wash it three or four times, guess what? The coating is back. Yeah. So if you think that putting that on and then applying a coating afterwards, it's going to fail. That's what I was thinking. I was very skeptical. Of yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, a lot of companies sell them. They're all basically the same idea. So spray on, agitate if possible, rinse off. So water spot removers. Uh, do we yeah, right. And a lot of people think that a water spot remover has some form of sealant or wax or coating in it. It doesn't. It's just repairing or taking off that film. Even a car that is unprotected, the, the water is completely hydrophilic on it. You put a water spot remover on, it is actually going to bring some of that beading back, even just with paint, because it's cleaning the surface. Uh, anyone here have a body shop? Right. The most hydrophobic paint you've ever seen is straight out of the booth. There's no coating that can match that paint, that hydrophobics, because right now that surface is perfect. 
It's not perfect, it's got flaws in it. It has runs, it might have fish eyes, it might have dust nibs, but where it doesn't have those, it is extremely hydrophobic. And a coating tries to mimic that because that paint, it's still off-gassing a little bit. Basically, the surface is sealed and water just falls off of it. So that's what we're trying to mimic with a coating. But a coating is there for the customers, first of all, and every car that comes into your shop or if you're a mobile detailer, uh, and by the way, you can do coatings outside, you can do them mobile. Don't fall into the hype that you need a shop, you need IR curing lamps and all that stuff. They can be done outside. Just have a coating that, again, cures quickly so that the customer doesn't have to keep it inside for three days. So what coating do you recommend for them? Because I do have some people that refuse to bring it to our shop and maybe other mobile units that yeah. we have, but I don't know if I feel comfortable doing a coating outside because I would prefer them to. Mm -hmm. But what coating do you re like recommend for a mobile? Like I said, I'm not here to recommend products, but follow me on YouTube and you'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. DIY. Yeah. Well, I tried like I spray a bunch because I'm still we officially we've only had our shop for eleven months. Good. So I'm still like running around the route basically figuring out what I want to use. Yeah. I haven't found anything. I mean now I will because I'm about to try it out. Yeah. No, there, there's a lot of good coatings on the market. Yes. Does UV light from the sun help with curing process like IR lights? No. Thank you. Doesn't make a difference. No. Uh, basically, a coating cures by uh, most cure most, like 90% of coatings, they will cure with humidity, not with heat or anything like that. So the IR curing doesn't really help and it never actually has. It was just, again, some coating companies wanna make it seem like you've got this long elaborate process and the more steps they can add in, the better it is. No, I was asking about the parking outside the sun. Oh, that's not gonna change anything. Okay. Yeah. It's just humidity. Yeah. So a humid day is actually going to cure faster than a, a, dry, a dry day. So Florida cures faster than Arizona. When we apply ceramic coating, what do you think is the most effective way to keep the system from coming in? So I know probably a lot of us do what we do. We offer warranty in three or five years, and to maintain that warranty, we recommend they come in every year to be able to check that. So offer them, the yeah. way to keep them coming in so it's not, they're gone for five years? Offer them great customer service. And most people don't keep their cars more than two years anyways. So even, if the, even though you're putting an eight-year coating on it, in two years, they're back with another car. Yeah. What about the air quality is not good for people living outside? Let's say, for example, North Carolina, we have a lot of olives at some point in the year. We keep the olives. We will not be recommended at that point because it stinks olives. Pre-clean it one panel at a time. Once you've pre-cleaned that panel, coat it. As soon as you're leveled it, Paul can fall on it all day long. What did you say, Matthew? What, what, why did you say polish is too hard? Uh, polishing the car is hard? Yeah. Uh, it's polished on the yeah. year is going to be hard. In a couple of years, you'll be polishing cars. <laughs> I start teaching people when they're 10 years old, so you're not far away.